Hello, I'm Daniil, and welcome to the Amuna Project. We here at the Amuna Project are continuing in our series of videos with respect to information, education, inspiration, guidance, advice. And we spent um, quite a few videos talking about the, the Mishkan and uh, the tabernacle, the portable sanctuary that the Jews uh, kept with them in their, uh, in their wanderings uh, in the 40 years in the wilderness. And there have been a lot of um, comparisons made, uh, a lot of metaphors. And there's one that I'd like to um, bring out. The Torah tells us that um, the cloud of God would be uh, on the Mishkan during the day, and the fire um, would be on it at night throughout the journey. So during the day it was a cloud, during the night it was a fire. And we see this in uh, Exodus uh, chapter 40, verse uh, 38. It is said, Chazal, our, our sages, say that a Torah scholar, someone who is learned in the Torah, someone who takes his life, his religious life seriously and learns, he's a microcosm of the tabernacle, of the sanctuary. He's a microcosm of the Mishkan, a living embodiment of the, the tabernacle. As Chazal, our sages say, the Shekhinah, the presence of God, resides within each person who is worthy of being a repository for it. So not only did the uh, Spirit of God um, manifest itself in the Mishkan, but each religious person, each genuinely religious Torah scholar, somebody who's working at knowledgeable, uh, being knowledgeable in Torah, he too is a repository for the divine presence. It was um, Rav Yehuda Tzedakah who made the following observation. The Mishkan had, the, the tabernacle had a uh, uh, two qualities, cloud and fire. Likewise, again, the comparison of the, the Mishkan, the tabernacle, to a Torah scholar. Similarly, a, to, a Torah scholar should also possess these two attributes. The cloud is an allusion to modesty, to tzniyas. Um, his, uh, he should be uh, modest uh, and um, unpretentious, covered, as it were, um, by, as if by a cloud. He should always be careful what he says, what he does, clouded in modesty. However, when the honor of the Torah is at stake, he must act as a fire, with passion, with zeal, and not shying away from the challenge or the confrontation. Humility is a great virtue. It's very special. And one that every Torah scholar should possess. There is a time, however, when uh, a misplaced humility or a misplaced self-effacement is a liability. When the Torah or those who epitomize its doctrine are disparaged, when they're attacked, when they're under fire, one must rise to the occasion and vehemently oppose those who would undermine the Torah. It's all good to be you know, quiet and unassuming and modest and careful and circumspect, but when the Torah is being under is under attack, when people who are knowledgeable knowledgeable in the Torah, when our rabbis, when our religious leaders are under attack, that's not the time for modesty. That's the time for zeal and action and to speak boldly and um, to act. Everything has its time. Everything has its day. We has to have cloud and fire. The Mishkan had both, and now 
those of us who take our religious lives seriously. We must have both tzniyas, modesty, and, um, but at the same time, we can't lack fire. We need it because there are times when the situation calls for a fiery response and uh, we are to respond sometimes in kind. Uh, we're going to be doing more videos along these lines. Please come back. Please watch. Please learn. And until next time, on behalf of the Imuna Project, I'm Daniil, and thank you so much.